The title race was blown wide open this weekend as Arsenal's William Saliba was sent off at Bournemouth before John Stone's controversial late winner for Man City was given at Wolves. And joining us in our brand new whistleblower studio is ex-Premier League referee Mark Halsey to dissect those huge decisions plus massive calls at Liverpool, Tottenham, Man United, Southampton, Fulham and Ipswich. Mark, how's it going? What do you think of the new studio then? Yeah, good morning, Will. Yeah, the studio looks very, very good. Um, I'm not happy today because my team, the bottom of the championship, we were woeful on Saturday. So, got Coventry tomorrow night, so let's just hope we can pick up a home win. Uh, Mark, I'd, as much as I'd love to talk QPR with you, uh, unfortunately, there is only one place to start, and that is at the top of the Premier League table. John Stone's late goal, uh, Bernardo Silva in an offside position, Wolves versus Man City. A 2-1 win it was for Man City as that late winner went in. Uh, referee Chris Kavanagh, VAR, Stuart Atwell, Phil Foden, corner comes in in the 95th minute. John Stones heads beyond Jose Sarr. Now, Bernardo Silva, at first, he's in an offside position when the corner's taken. He backs into the goalkeeper as the cross is delivered, but He's crouching down when the ball goes in off John Stone's head. The on-field decision was no goal, I think. And then VAR recommended a review. Kavanagh checked it on the monitor and they stuck, uh, or sorry, they overturned that on-field decision of goal. Now, it was a bit chaotic, but what did you make of it all? Yeah, listen, I think the assistant referee was quite right to, to flag um, offside because obviously he, he cannot see from where he is and he does the silver impact on, on the goalkeeper. Um, so quite rightly, he flagged, flagged for, to disallow the goal. Chris Kavanagh disallows the goal. And then obviously that's what VAR is there for, to check obviously every goal, penalty, red card is, is checked. So with that, I think uh, the VAR was absolutely spot on to, to um, recommend a review for Chris Kavanagh to go and have a look because when you do see it, well, when you see the replay straight away, you know straight away that um, that still hasn't impacted on the goalkeeper with being in his line of vision. He's soon he, he just moves out of the way straight away. So for me, I think the correct decision was made and, and that's what we want to see and that is what VAR is there for. Yeah, well, there was plenty of Arsenal fans who were not happy whatsoever. I want to just touch on this first of all. Mark, because Arsenal fans will tell you it's undeniably offside, was uh, what a colleague of mine was telling me this morning. How here is Bernardo Silva not interfering with the goalkeeper? I appreciate he's not in an offside position there, but then when John Stones heads the ball, the goalie's still aware that he's near him, is he not? And I think we've got an angle showing Bernardo Silva crouching down. How does that not impact the goalkeeper? Yeah, but remember, you cannot be offside from a corner kick, OK? No, so, I appreciate that, yeah. But so, look at this. This is when the ball but, goes yeah, but, in. But, so when the ball comes in, I mean, the goalkeeper's sort of pushing him in the back as well. He, he's quite, he can quite rightly stand there. He's, when, when, John, when John Stone's head, head, head is that ball, is he interfering with an opponent? Does he impact on his line of vision? And you can clearly see, no. He doesn't. And you can clearly see that the keeper sees the ball all the way. It's just a great header from John Stones. And in my opinion, the goal was correctly given. We do not want to see goals ruled out for those sort of situations. Well, look, Pep Guardiola says that Bernardo Silva wasn't disturbing anyone and that Jose Sarr has perfect vision. Gary O'Neill said he, or made a suggestion that perhaps there's some big club bias going on or subconscious bias from the referees. He also referred to a goal that Wolves scored against West Ham last season that was ruled out for a similar sort of situation. I think we've, uh, we've got a picture of it here. But it, do you think it's a bit disingenuous from Gary Neal because that goal he's talking about against West Ham, the Wolves player is smack bang in the middle of Lucas Fabianski. So sort of where do you sit with this? Yeah, I mean, I remember it very well. And I said at the time that I felt that the goal should have been given because I didn't think the, the impact on the line of vision of the goalkeeper on that day either. But I think what, where Gary O'Neill can have a, a complaint is just prior leading up to that, that series of corners, there was a, there was a clear foul on on the, the Wolves, Wolves forward by um, Nunes. So he, he can have a claim at that because had Chris Cameron given the free kick there, 
that would not have led to the the, the, the series of corners that they got, that which yeah. led to their to their winner. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we could see it a goal last season against West Ham that Gary O'Neill was talking about. And again, clearly the Wolves player right in the eye line of Lucas Fabianski, somewhat different. But just quickly then, Mark, if you're saying that's a goal, can we expect going forward? opposition teams to be employing tactics like Bernardo Silva's a little bit more where they back into the goalkeeper and disturb him as the corner's being taken and then they just duck out away? Listen, there's always a little bit of contact going on in the box and, you, and all the time you see goalkeepers pushing players, don't you? They push them. They push them out of the way just before the corner's taken or while the corner, then when the corner comes across. So for me, that's that's normal contact. And yes, if that's, if that's what... They, the, the tactics they employ other clubs, then, then so be it. But we do not want to see goals ruled out of that nature. Fair enough. Right, Mark, let's go to Anfield. Uh, Levi Colwell, we'll start with that one. The penalty that was given for his trip on Curtis Jones. 2-1 win for Liverpool in the end. Ref John Brooks, VAR Michael Oliver. Now, should, uh, first of all, w with that one, do you think that was a correct decision to award a penalty there for Colwell's kick out, if you like, at Curtis Jones? Yeah, I think, listen, once the referee gives it in, in real time, I think, we, as, as we want, as Howard Webb has said many times inconsistently, that they want to see the, stay with the on-field decision. Um, I think, that, I think for me, the, the penalty was the right decision. Um, and I don't think there's any complaints. The VAR are not going to over, overturn that situation. OK, now, what, what I do want to talk about, Mark, Tosin Adarabayo, the ball comes over the top and it's a sort of clumsy challenge on Diogo Yota, about for just about the halfway line at Anfield it was. Only a yellow card shown. And we're obviously going to talk, Arsenal. You can see here, that's where the collision took place, on the halfway mm. line, sort of a big empty space for, for Jota to run into after that. Clumsy challenge, yellow card awarded and Liverpool given a free kick, of course. Arsenal fans absolutely up in arms about William Saliba's red card and comparisons between this and that decision. Just, just stick with this one first of all. Here's the contact from Tosin on Jota. Not insignificant at all. What did you make of this one first? I thought a, uh, a yellow card was the correct outcome. Um, remember uh, the criteria for denying a goal or an obvious, remember, an uh, obvious goal-scoring opportunity yeah. is obviously the distance from the goal to the incident, OK? The direction of play, the likelihood of keeping or gaining control of the ball and the location and number of defenders around. In well, there's that, no... That, that, you can that, see that here, scenario. no defenders whatsoever. So that, ball coming that, over that, the that, top. That, that, what That's the criteria that the referee has to think about. And and for me, because obviously you, you look at that one, you look at the distance from the goal to the offence, and uh, for me, a yellow card was correct. OK. Does that, does that, how do you feel about that decision then compared to the Arsenal one? We'll obviously move on to that in a little while. But William Saliba, Arsenal fans are saying, what's the difference? Uh, listen, as you in my column, I, I was I had my doubts about um, it being a red card. I thought um, Rob Jones got it absolutely spot on with the yellow card. Because obviously, as I just said about the criteria. OK, fair enough. And what do you think of the other penalty that was awarded and then overturned? Curtis Jones involved once again. He sort of, it appeared on first viewing that he put it through Sanchez's legs as Sanchez came out to make the slide tackle. A referee, sorry, the referee awarded a penalty initially. VAR recommended a review. He had a look and it appeared that, that Sanchez made contact with the ball with his leg before Curtis Jones did that dramatic flip over his head. Yeah, listen. I, I thought that was the, the correct decision. I think, yeah, I mean, obviously, in real time, you could you could argue was it a penalty. Um, I thought VAR was correct to come in and recommend a review. All we want to do is see consistency because if you go back to the first weekend of the season at West Ham Aston Villa, Cash Matty Cash done exactly the same with um, Thomas Suchek, and a penalty was given. Yeah. And they stayed with the on-field decision. The review wasn't recommended. Now, on that day, I said it wasn't a penalty and VAR should have got involved. Right. Yesterday at Liverpool-Chelsea, I thought it was the correct decision with the VAR recommending the review. What, to so award what a we penalty? want to see oh, right. is I consistency. Mean, yeah. yeah. But, but do, do we want consistency, Mark, or do we just want the most correct decisions? You can see there, just at the bottom of the screen, um, Sanchez's ball, like, leg clearly connects with the ball. I know you're saying yeah. you want consistency, but... 
That also, you yeah. say that a lot. But if, if a wrong decision happens, you don't just want consistency because it was given before that it's given again. Do we, we want the most right decisions? Yeah, but we want to see consistency within the within the situations and the incidents. Now, you know, you go back to the West Ham Villa game. Why wasn't why didn't VAR get involved in that? Because that was the wrong, in my opinion, that was the wrong decision. But they stayed with the on-field decision because it's subjective. You could argue that Liverpool Chelsea one was subjective. Right. But you, I mean, you tell me that all the time, Mark. You're always saying it's subjective to me. At some <laughs> stage, we've got to have some sort of framework that these referees can uh, make decisions. Right, let's move on then to the Arsenal game. William Saliba's red card. Arsenal's third in eight games. You know, Arsenal fans up in arms, conspiracy theorists left, right and centre saying that the PGML have got an agenda on them. Perhaps might be worth having a word with their players about their ill discipline, first of all. Declan Rice <laughs> described the decisions as naive and silly after the game. Rob Jones, the referee here, VA. Jared, Gill uh, Jared Gillett, 30 minutes in. Leandro Trossard, dodgiest back pass you've ever seen over the top. Evan Nielsen trying to get on the end of it. Little tug back from William Saliba, as you can see here, about six yards inside the Arsenal half. He goes down. And, I mean, again, what, what did you make of this one? Is a yellow card given at first, then VAR sent him to the screen. Good use or unnecessary to get involved? Yeah, listen, I thought... Watching the game live, I thought Rob Jones made the correct decision. Law 12 fouls of misconduct. I, uh, you know, regarding uh, a goal or an obvious goal scoring opportunity, I've already quoted the, the criteria that the referee has to go through. Yeah. Um, and I thought, uh, with that incident, it is subjective. And Rob Jones straight away showed a yellow card, exactly what I would have done in that situation. So, what you got to have a look at was it a clear and obvious error by Rob Jones? In my opinion, no. Is it subjective to whether it's a a denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Yes, it is subjective. And we keep hearing about Howard Webb saying we don't want VAR getting involved in subjective decisions. Well, for me, that was subjective. And I don't know why Gerard Gillett got involved in that situation because it's subjective and it wasn't a clear and obvious error, in my opinion, from, from Rob Jones. I thought he got it spot on. So the referee made a decision subjectively and we should have stuck with the on-field referee decision of a, of a yellow card. Mark, do you think, just very briefly then, that referees this season, it feels like anyway, in a lot of instances, they're giving like maybe a more conservative decision, i.e. a yellow card in this instance, knowing they've got the VAR to fall back on, and it feels like that's, they're using it as a safety blanket. Do you, are you seeing that? Yeah, I think, I think they are relying on, on VAR instead of going out and you know, referee and what's in front of them. Yeah. But even with that situation, for me, VAR shouldn't have got involved. I, 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 so, you know, listen, if he showed a red card straight away, you could, you know, then you'd say, OK, fine, that was your decision on the day. You, you, you would have said it, it's subjective. He could have shown, you could then be saying he could have shown a yellow, but he chose to show a red. But as I said, with Law 12, you know, denying of an obvious goal scoring opportunity and, and the criteria... For me, there's doubt there to whether that was an, an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Yeah, fair enough. Right, uh, just just one more then, Mark. Arsenal hard done by there. Do you think they got away with one with David Raya? The penalty he gives away, a uh, challenge on Evan Nilsson. I know you're going to tell me the criteria says uh, it can't, to avoid double jeopardy, uh, a player, when giving away a penalty, he's not sent off if he makes a genuine attempt to play the ball, right? I know that's what you're going to say. I've had enough conversations with you about this. I cannot see how David Raya makes a genuine attempt to play the ball there. He's absolutely miles away from the ball, as we can see. Evan Nielsen's dragging it across his path. Some of the other angles we've got make it look even worse. And yet, he's allowed to stay on the pitch, take the penalty, and most importantly, not be suspended for the next games. Well, listen, the ball's there with him playing, so he's making that dive, isn't he? So... Listen, I, I think that's the correct decision. Um, you know, it, it, it's, he has made the change. How's he going to get the ball, the ball there? Look. Yeah, <laughs> Look but he's, 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 he's trying to, he's, it looks like he's going to try and block the ball, isn't he? So, listen, I don't want to see goalkeepers or players sent off for those situations. And that's why that's why the law was brought in. Um, so, he's trying to spread it. He's trying to make it. He's trying to spread his body to try and get to the ball or, or push the ball away. Let, but he can use his legs there, can not he? He can use his legs and use his body, use his arms. four yards, Mark. Four yards between the ball. He's just dived knowing he's going to trip him up. I'm not having it. Come on. 
Okay, well, we'll, we'll agree to disagree, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's right. right, Manchester United, Matthias De Ligt got a knock on the head early in the game at that 2-1, during the 2-1 victory that United had over Brentford at Old Trafford. They went 1-0 down, of course. Ref Sam Barrett here, VAR, David Coote. And it was about 11 minutes in, De Ligt split his head open. Uh, nasty clash, as you can see here, blood pouring down his head. They had two goes the medical team, at trying to stitch him up and sort him out during the first half. And then right in the dying moments of the half in stoppage time, he's hauled off again by the referee to have treatment. And at that time, Ethan Pinnock is the Brentford defender, right in the area that Matthias De Ligt had been marking all half. Heads Brentford, 1-0 in the lead. De Ligt, as you can see here, absolutely furious. So was Eric Ten Hag and Ruud van Nistelrooy, the United assistant coach. Now, what does the, the law tell us here? What did you make of that whole situation? Because United sort of felt a little bit aggrieved. Well, listen, you can't blame the match officials on that situation. Manchester United and the medical staff, that's what they should be looking at. Um, they should have sorted out in the, when he first went off. He's, you know, he's gone back on. He's been sent back off again because it's bleeding for the second time. And you can, you can argue the full official, Gavin Ward, should not have let him back on. Um, they should have made sure, obviously, it was stitched up and, and a head bandage put on. So, for me, the, the referees, once they see blood, they have to ask the player to leave the field of play. Yeah. And, and, and it, was, it, was, it was quite considerable, wasn't it? The bleed was quite considerable. So, you cannot look at the match officials. You have to look at Manchester United and their medical team with that situation. And, obviously, the fourth official, Gavin Ward, again, not let, let, let him on after the second, second occasion. Fair enough. Clear and obvious error by the Man United medical team by the sounds of it then, Mark. Right, Mark, let's uh, wrap this up. The latest episode of The Whistleblower, the brand new studio, with a quick fire round, as we always do. Right, I need some very, very brief answers from you here. Right, number one, was it the correct decision to send West Ham's Mo Kudus off, as you can see here, for retaliating to Mickey van der Ven's shove with this strike to the face uh, before he then also lashed out at Pape Matassar? Absolutely correct decision to to send off uh, the West Ham player. But what we want to see is consistency because Nicholas Jackson should have been sent off for the same incident um, against uh, when Chelsea played Nottingham Forest. Well, it's That's like what you, we want to see, consistency. It's like you read my mind, Mark. Question two, what was the difference between that and this, as we can see here, when Nicholas Jackson is slapping Nottingham Forest, Maratta and Namela at the end of that game? Absolutely no difference at all. As I say, we want to see consistency. Number three, Mark, should West Ham have been awarded a penalty for this here when Mo Kudus' goal-bound shot hit Destiny Udoggy right on the line? No, correct decision, no penalty. There wasn't not any deliberate movement of the arm towards the ball. His arm was in a natural position and, for me, no penalty. Correct no decision. Cool. Number four, were there double standards on display at Southampton where Ryan Fraser was sent off and Leicester awarded a penalty for his shirt pull on Jamie Vardy as he was trying to score, but Southampton were not given a penalty for this rascal shirt pull from Jordan Ayew on Paul Onuachi? Oh, absolutely. Both, both should have been given. The, Vardy, the Jamie Vardy one was given correctly and that should have been given as well. I, I just don't understand how... That's not given when they say oh, it didn't impact on, on, on that phase of play. But of course, it does impact on that phase of play cool. because it starts him getting into challenge for the ball. Number five, was it the correct decision to award Fulham a penalty when Raul Jimenez headed the ball into Matty Cash's arm from feet uh, of maybe even inches? No, I thought uh, Darren England was correct in not awarding a penalty. And once again, I don't know why VAR got involved. For me, that was the wrong decision. Number six, was it the correct decision to send Fulham's Joe Chim Anderson off for this shove in the back on Ollie Watkins as he was throwing goal? Yeah, he could have no complaints. It was a, a denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity no, outside the box. Obviously, there's no double jeopardy. So, uh, for me, I thought they got that absolutely spot on. Uh, number seven, uh, same game. Did Jaden Philogene deserve a second yellow card for this? His arm outstretched and this challenge on Reese Nelson. No, I, I thought that was a harsh second yellow card. I thought a free kick was sufficient. It was a careless challenge. Um, Aston Villa free one up. And for me, I just thought a free kick was a su sufficient punishment. And the final one, was Michael Oliver correct to overturn this decision to give Ipswich a penalty after VAR highlighted that Jack Clark had appeared to kick Dwight McNeil's leg rather than it being a deliberate challenge from the Everton man? Yeah, I thought that was the, that was the correct decision. I mean, in real time, it looks like it, it could be a penalty. I mean, it was exactly the same. I think was it Everton Newcastle? That's it. Where Everton were all a penalty and it was over, overturned. So I thought that was the correct decision. Mm -hmm.